I'm going to try to give folks a chance to see what it's like in the foundry when I mull sand. This is a pile of sand that I shook out of a couple of molds a few days ago when I cast a 36 camelback and then an 18 uh, prism straight edge. So what we're left with is a bunch of green sand here that is kind of lumpy and now has dried some from when it came out of the molds. It was fairly moist then, but it sits here in the barn and dries out with time. So the object here is to, first of all, mix it up and break up some of the big clumps, which my muller will do, but it's easier on it if I go ahead and just break up some of those big clumps. And the reason for mixing is because I use reuse the core sand that is mixed with epoxy and doesn't have the coating on it of clay and uh, it, it isn't mixed in with coal. So I've added in a couple of handfuls of clay here. It's this white powdery stuff. It's actually buried a little bit, but nevertheless, that's what it is. And I'm going to just mix this up so it's more or less a uniform mass of coal. You can see that, or I mean of sand, you can see that some of it's powdery dry. And then some of it that was probably deeper under the pile is actually still pretty moist and does have some green strength. So it works best for me if I get it all uniform and then each batch I add about the same amount of water. So without much further ado, let's just start shoveling this stuff and mixing it up. And when there are big clumps like this, I just whack them with the with the shovel and walk around the pile a little bit and break up some of the clumps and just keep on going. Doesn't take too long and it's more or less mixed up uniformly and most of the big clumps have been taken care of. As you can see some of those clumps are pretty good size like that. There's a good one right there. you see the wheel in my molar, you'll understand how the great big hard clumps can start. It doesn't really hurt anything, but it just means I have to get in there and give it a little encouragement to get going. And the mixing doesn't have to be perfect, but it does help. It's pretty close to getting ready to shovel into the roller, which I'll show in the next segment. I guess I'll have to introduce you to my very much homemade, shop-made muller. This was a originally a Red Lion brand cement mixer and I picked it up quite used six or eight years ago I suppose now up in Canada and it's been remodeled and revamped a bit since then but this old beast was pretty stoutly built and I really like that it's held up well so it's got this big u-shaped cast iron support piece and a, oh, I imagine that's uh, almost a quarter of an inch thick steel drum. It is driven by a serpentine belt now. You can see that here just like was in a in your car and this certainly did not have that belt when I got it. It had a big cast iron ring gear and I it had it was pretty worn when I got it and it really wore out uh, with quite a bit of use. So that's when I got the idea of using the uh, serpentine belt, which just wraps around the drum. 
and has done a good job of driving it. It's been pretty durable. It's tensioned with a little idler wheel here and a, and a spring and a one horse motor. And then in here is a uh, chain drive uh, gear reduction that slows down the revolutions of the drum. I'll turn it on here. <laughs> buckets of sand at about a bucket and a half per load. I won't make you guys sit through all that, but I'll show you a bucket or so just so you can kind of get the idea. What I'll be doing is shoveling in oh, about seven or so good sized shovelfuls of sand, maybe eight, and then adding some water to it to moisten it and therefore make it have a lot more green strength, they call it or you might just say packing ability.
that's more or less what a batch looks like. It probably gives people the willies to see me reach into the muller and scoop out some of the, the last of the sand. But in reality, there's nothing in there that could really uh, catch me and crush my hands. There are some mullers where that is a risk, but on this one, really not. So here's a look inside the muller with sand that I just shoveled in but haven't added any water. And you can see that it's a little bit clumpy, has a little bit of green strength, but not very much. And then here's the wheel over here that is acting like a paddle wheel and the crush up chunks as they come through. In a moment, we'll add some water and you'll start to see the character of the sand changing. Right now, you can see the sand is forming just a little bit of clumps and stuff. But as I add water here, it won't take very long and you'll see much bigger clumping starting to occur. And in fact, right over here, you can see sheets of sand forming. And that's a sign I look for to know that my sand is getting about enough moisture and has pretty good green strength. Again, it breaks nice and cleanly and yet holds together pretty well. So that's what we're looking for. Well, there we are. What was a pile on the, of sand on the floor is now in those five gallon buckets and ready to be molded. Probably tomorrow or the next day, we'll see how that works out. Anyways, each bucket weighs about 50 pounds or so. So looks like that could be 11 buckets. So probably 550 pounds of sand there. I put the, I keep it in the buckets with the lids on so that it doesn't dry out over time. And it'll keep that way for quite a few days in the winter and for maybe four or five days in the summer when it's a little bit hotter and a little bit drier. And so it tends to dry out more.